You know, how many of y'all ever feel like you don't have enough time? Maybe anybody ever said anything like that? Anybody ever said like, man, I just don't have enough time in the day to do everything that I want to do. You say there's something about time, right? We all, we all want it. We all, we all value time. We want more time. We, you know, here are some things that people say about time. You know, it's one of the things that when, when you're younger, they don't tell you. But as you get older, time seems to go by faster. It just goes by a little bit faster. If you have children, that speeds up time a little bit more. You know, <clears throat> when you hear uh, older parents tell young parents, if you're a new parent and, and, and somebody tells you to enjoy your children because they grow up quickly, believe them, right? It's the truth. You know, children grow up quickly. Life just seems to, to go by faster and faster. You know, the pace of our life is sometimes maybe faster than we would like it to be, right? We have so many responsibilities, you know, whether that's at school, at work, you know, taking the kids to school, picking them up, taking them to practice, going to this event, going to church, you know, all kinds of things that, that fill up our schedule. And what do we know about time, my friends? We know that, that you can't stop time. You can't pause time. But what you can do, my friends, is you can make the most of the time that God has given you. And so in this series about time, I'm going to talk to you. We're going to take a look at what the Bible says about time and how you and I can maximize and make the most of our time. You know, because, you know, as you know, time, it, it just goes by. And so in this series, you know, my hope or my goal during this series is to get us to think a little bit more about time. I want us to kind of pause and, and reflect on the time that we have every day and how we're using that time so we can make the most of it. I want to, I want to help you make the most of that time. Are you making time for the things that matter most? What is most important in your life? Are you spending time on the right things and the right priorities? Is your relationship with God receiving the time that it needs so that you can have a vibrant and strong relationship? Do you have a good balance or rhythm of, of your time with work, family, rest, self, and God? These are some of the questions that we're going to, to tackle during this series. And so because I believe as as we dig into what God says about time, and it will give us a, a, a better perspective of the time that God has given us. And, you know, what we like to do is to be mindful of the time because this is what we know about time. There was a yesterday, we are here today, and there will be a tomorrow. And so let's make the most of the time that God has given us. The title of my message today is the wise and unwise. And so today, I, I want to help you to be wise with your time. In, in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is, is talking to followers of God, and he's talking to them about how to be a, a good follower of Christ, how, how to make the most of, of your time and how to prioritize a relationship with God. And, and so listen to what Paul says here in verse 15 and through 17 of Ephesians chapter 5. He says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And so, you know, this, this verse right here, I actually gave you a, a, a very nice translation because there was another Bible translation of this verse, and it says this. It says, don't live like fools, but live like the wise. See, the, the opposite of a wise person, the Scripture says, is a fool. Don't act foolish, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. The scripture says that to be wise with your time and to make the most of the opportunities that God has given us. You see, a wise person, my friends, will receive guidance and instruction 
and will become wiser. On the other hand, a foolish person will not receive guidance or instruction and as a result will remain a fool. And so I want to encourage you today to be wise. A foolish person has no desire to, to draw closer to God. A wise person will look for more of God in their life. And so again, I say to you, be wise. L listen to these words from a prayer that, that Moses prayed. And, and as you read Psalm 90, and I encourage you to do it, Moses is praying a prayer and he's trying to ask God, or he is asking God to give him perspective about the time that he had. And so listen to what he says here in verse 12. He says, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. And so Moses, as you read through Psalm 90, Moses is having this prayer with God and and he's under, he understands that, that life is short. And so he's asking God to, to have perspective about the time that he has so, so that he can make the most of that time. So he can, he can make the most of the time with the things that matter most. So he can prioritize his life around what it is that matters. Because as you know, too often we can go through life and time passes us by. Right? Have you ever felt like you, get, you, re, you reach a certain age and you're like, wait a minute, how, did, how am I here? It felt like I was just 18 a couple years ago. You know, as you start seeing those reunions come around, you know that 10th one comes around, but then the 20th comes around a little bit faster. At least that's what they tell me. And so, you know, and then 30 comes faster. You know, there's something about time, right? It doesn't slow down. It, it just keeps going. And so we want to be mindful. We want to we wanna kind of pause because life is fast and life can be fast. You're busy doing this, busy doing that. But we want to be able to think about the time that God has given us. And so how can you be wise and make the most of your time? I, today, I just want to share two thoughts with you. Again, we're just starting this series, so there's, I'm going to say a whole lot about time. And we're going to dig into the scripture and see what God says about how we can maximize our time. But, but today, I want to give you two thoughts. And here's the first one. It is wise to spend time with the giver of time. It is wise to spend time with the giver of time. The scripture says, this is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so if, if you're here today, if you have breath in your lungs today, what does that mean? It means that the giver of time has given you some more time. He has given you another day. Every day, every day is a gift from God. Every day is a blessing from above. And I know that there are some days that are hard. And there are some days that are difficult. And there are some mornings where you don't want to wake up to the day that's in front of you. But listen, it is still a gift. It is a gift from above. From above, every day is a gift from God. One of the most important things that you can do to be wise with your time is to spend time with God. Do you know that if you were a writer, you know, an author is someone who writes a book. And as an author, you determine the first sentence of chapter one and the last sentence of that book. And God, my friends, is the author of time. He is the author of time. God gave birth to time in the beginning. If you start all the way at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter one, you will read in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then you will read how God said, let there be light, and there was light. And listen, listen to it, how it goes on to describe this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. It says, God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. That is the birth of time on earth. That 
that was day one on earth. The earth clock started at that moment. God is the author of time. Several thousand years later, Jesus shows up upon the earth and he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he was with God in the beginning. In other words, my friends, guess who was there in the beginning? Jesus was there in the beginning. And that is so powerful because last weekend we celebrated the life, the birth, and the resurrection of Christ. We celebrate how time, my friends, time itself is told. The history of time is told around the life of Christ. Life before Christ, B.C., and life after the year of the Lord. And so life itself, the, the history of the human timeline, my friends, is told by the life of Jesus. What does that tell us about Christ? It tells us that he is the most important figure who has ever walked on the face of the earth. And what did Jesus tell us? That in the beginning, he was there. And so this is why I say to you, it is wise to spend time with the author of time. <laughs> Jesus said this once. He said, this is eternal life. It is to know God and his son, Jesus Christ. Eternal life. You know, sometimes we think that eternal life begins when we breathe our last breath here. But no, my friends, eternal life begins the minute you come to faith in Christ. Eternal life, he says, is to know God and to know Jesus, the Christ, the Son. God is the author of time for the universe. He is the author of time on earth. And he is also the author of your time. Listen to God's words as he speaks about being the author of our time. Listen to what he said to Jeremiah here in chapter 1. He says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. What does that mean, my friends? It's that God knew you. God thought about you. Even before you were born, God knew who you were. He saw your days coming to pass. What does this mean? It means that you're not an accident. It means that you're here on purpose and for a purpose. For God formed you. God formed you while you were still in your mother's womb. In other words, my friends, God was active even in your birth. God is the author of your time. If you want to make the most of time, make time for the things that matter most. And one of those is what, my friends? It is wise to spend time with the author of time. I believe that's one, what we do when we come to his house and we come to a place of worship like we're doing right now. It's one of the ways that we spend time with the author of time. But we also spend time with him outside of this environment, right? We spend time with him on the way over here. We spend time with him as we leave. We spend time with him on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. We spend time with him throughout the day. How do we do that? By cultivating a, a good prayer life, a good connection with God, where, where you want to be in this constant communion and fellowship with your creator, with the author of the time that you have. That's how you and I can make the most of our time, is that we keep God as a priority in our life, as the priority of our life, that he is number one in our life, and everything else comes after him. Why? Because he's the author of the time that I have today. He is the author of my time tomorrow. And so you want to spend time with him. See, God is, is writing a book with your life story. And so you want to spend time with him because what, what does God know about your life? 
He knows your yesterday. He knows the experiences of your past. He knows the pain of yesterday. He knows the hurts that maybe are still in your heart and affecting your today. He knows. And he also knows what's coming tomorrow. He knows what lies ahead tomorrow. He knows the victories that are come to, coming tomorrow. And he also knows the storms that are coming to your life tomorrow. And so he knows how to prepare you for what lies ahead. It is wise to spend time with the giver of time. How do we make the most of our time? Here's a second thought I want us to think about today. It is wise to seek God's will, to seek God's will for our life. When Jesus walked on this earth, Jesus himself said, he is, I'm here to do the will of my Father. He says, I don't do anything apart from what I saw my Father do. In other words, he says, as I'm walking through this earth, my heart's attention is focused on God, and I want to do his will. And so it is wise for us to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Do you know, my friends, that the best place to be is in the center of God's will? That's the best place to be in your life, is to be in the center of God's will. The best place that you can lead your family to be is to be in the center of God's will for you and your family. That's the best thing. That's the best place to be. Do you know that the day that you breathe your last breath, my friends, the best place to be is in the center of God's will? Because there is no fear in the center of God's will. There's no fear of what lies ahead tomorrow because you already know that Jesus is there waiting for you on the other side. Do you know that you've got nothing to fear or worry about when you're in the center of God's will for your life? Nothing to fear. I, I, I think about a couple years ago, well, it's three years ago. Um, <clears throat> I, I, um, I received an invitation to go to, uh, to Israel. And um, that was around August of 2019. And August, September, I received an invitation if I, if I wanted to go in March. And, <clears throat> and uh, you know, we had just kind of gone through Layla, Ava's surgery, the first surgery that, that she had, and so it was kind of like, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the right time, but, but, you know, my wife and I, Pastor Ann and I, we talked about it, and, and something in my heart felt that, that it was the right time, but we needed to be in agreement about that. And so, you know, we talked about it and prayed about it and, and felt that, that it was the Lord's will to go at that season in, our, in my life. And so, and so, you know, 2020 came around, and February's here, and late February, right, we start hearing about a virus that's beginning to spread all over the world, and, and so, you know, we, it, we're getting closer, so I'm going to fly out the, the first of March, and, and so we hear, you know, you were hearing the reports how this virus is spreading across the world, and so there's this question now, like, I don't know, is this the right time to go? Is this a good time to go, to go to Israel and be away for two weeks out of the country while this is happening? But something inside of my heart and my wife's heart felt like, no, this feels like God's will. And so we're going to trust that. And, and, and I remember leaving, getting on that plane and just trusting in, that, in God's will, saying, you know what? I feel in my heart, I prayed about it. I feel that leading of the Holy Spirit that this is your will. So, Lord, we know you have a plan. And so if I'm going to Israel, Lord God, then I know I'm going to be in the center of God's will. And not only are you going to protect me, but you're going to take care of my family as well. <clears throat> because when you, there is no better or more safe or secure place to be than to be in the center of God's will for your life. And that's why it is wise to see God's will for your life. And so, you know, we're, we're in Israel and, and uh, enjoy an amazing trip there. And, 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 and of course, you know, while we're there, you know, flights start getting canceled and airlines start, you know, shutting down. And, 
And so it's like, okay, God, you got me over here. You got to get me back home. And, you know, I trusted in your will. And, uh, and, and sure enough, you know, we were able to catch the last flight, you know, out of, out of Tel Aviv there in Israel back to the States. And it was, it was, it was able to make it back home safely and everything was fine. But, but I, I say that just to, just to encourage you to look for God's will. You know, we can find God's will by following the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the ways that we find God's will is by listening to, to how the Holy Spirit is guiding us and leading us in our life. Listen to, listen to what God says about seeking God's will. In James chapter 4, listen to what he says. He says, now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or do that. In other words, my friend, it is wise to seek God's will in your life. It is wise to, to look for God's will be, before you do this or before you do that. It's, it's wise for us to, to live a life where we're looking for God's will in our life. Jesus modeled this for us. We saw how Jesus lived even the day or the night before he is crucified. What is Jesus doing? The scripture says he is praying. He is calling upon his father for the strength to do his will. And what does he say? He says, not my will, but your will be done. What was Jesus looking for in that hour of sorrow and pain and anguish? He was looking for God's will for his life. And so what does that say about us? That we should be seeking out and looking for God's will for our life. You know, when, I, when, when you look at the world today, it seems that people have forgotten about looking for God's will. Instead, people are just doing what they want to do, just kind of going in the direction that they want to go in, not even considering, does the author of my time have anything to say about my life? Does the author of my time want to speak into my life and give me some guidance and give me some direction or give me some instruction? What do we start with, my friends? They said we're talking about being wise with our time. The wise person looks for God. The wise person seeks guidance and instruction while the foolish person does not. And so I want to encourage you today to think about Christ, to look for his will. And I know sometimes we focus, you know, sometimes too much on, on, on really specific things, right? Sometimes we focus on, I don't know, is this the job that God wants me to take? Is this the person that I should marry? You know, you're looking at your person you're sitting next to. You bring them to church and you're trying to see, Lord, is this the one? <laughs> and those are good prayers to pray. And I, I think we should see God's will in those things. You know, sometimes it's like, Lord, is this the car you want me to buy? Is this the house you want me to buy? And I think God will give us some instruction and he'll guide us in those decisions as well. But do you know, sometimes we get stuck there. Sometimes we say, well, I, you know, I, I don't know what God wants me to do. And so I'm just going to wait. No, my friends, you do know what God wants you to do because God has made his will clear to you. What does God want you to do? He wants you to obey his word. He wants you to follow Jesus. He wants you to repent of your sins and trust Jesus with all your heart. He wants you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. He wants you, he wants you to, to, to serve God and, and to do the good works that he's called you to do. You see, we do know the will of God. You should do, we should do what we already know to do. Sometimes we're waiting. We're waiting on only the specific thing that we're asking for. Is this the one that I'm, is this your will for my life? Is this person your will for my life? And we're only waiting for that instead of doing everything else that God has said. The best thing you can do, my friends, is to do what you already know God's will is to do. And God will cause everything else to come to place. And so there is no better or safer place to be than to be in the center of God's will. Do you know that David was in the center of God's will when he defeated 
the giant Goliath. He was in the center of God's will. And he knew it in his heart that he was in the right place at the right time. When he went down to that valley to give food to his brothers and he hears the giant sharing the mocking of the armies of Israel, God in him, the Spirit of God, speaks to David and he senses and he feels that I'm supposed to go and fight this Goliath. I'm supposed to step up and do it. He stepped into God's will. Where was he? He was in the center of God's will, and that's why no harm came to David, but instead David accomplished a part of the purpose of his life. Yeah. <clears throat> when Esther walked into the king's chamber, she needed boldness and courage. Because a woman was not allowed to walk into the king's court in the way that she was about to. But she felt that leading in her spirit, and she knew in her heart this was God's will. She knew that she had been raised for such a time as this. What was she looking for? She asked the people of God to pray as she went to do this. What was she seeking? She was seeking the will of the Father. Do you know that the scripture says that if you suffer for doing God's will, you will still, you're still in the best place to be. This is what happened to many of the early believers and early followers of Christ. Many of them died brutal deaths, but they were willing to do it. They were willing to do God's will, even if it cost them their life. The scripture says that if you suffer for doing God's will, that God will reward you even in that suffering. In other words, what is God saying to us, my friends? It is wise to seek, to desire to do God's will. What are we talking about today? The wise and the unwise. The wise person, God says, is a person who looks to spend time with the author of time. To spend time with the one who gives you the time that you have. So I want to encourage you. How do you make the most of your time? Keep, keep God as the priority of your life. Keep him as first place in your life. And you know there's many distractions that will fight you on that. Busyness, life, time, moving, family, all kinds of things will try to pull you away from your relationship with God. But don't allow that to happen, my friends, because if you want to make the most of your time, the best thing that you can do is to keep him first. Yeah. It's to spend time with the giver of the time that you have. Yeah. And the second thought that I had for you today is that it is wise to see God's will. As you spend time with him, as you go about your day in and day out, live with a heart that is looking to God. Live with the same heart that Jesus said. And he said, I've come to do my Father's will. Not my will, but your will be done. Always looking, what is, looking for the will of the Father. And do what you already know to do while you wait on the things that you're not sure what to do. Just do what you already know to do. You know, sometimes we're, we're waiting on something and we think that, that God is waiting to bless us, but God is saying, do something with what I've already given you. Do what you already know to do. And so, again, I want to just encourage you, you know, to spend time with the giver of time. And it is wise to see God's will in your life. How can we make the most of the time that God has given us, my friends, is by doing those two things, at least those two. Again, I, again, like I said, I'm just starting this series. We're going to dig in and, and see what God has to say about, to us about time. But come on, how many of y'all received that with me today? <clears throat> let, let, me, let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for giving us time today, Lord God. Thank you that you are the author of time. Thank you that every day that we receive is, is a gift from above. And so, Lord, we pray together that you help us, Lord, as the busyness of life is always drawing us, the fast pace of going here and there, the attractions of, of doing this or that, Lord God, always pulling on our time. But we ask, Lord God, that you help us, Lord God. Help us to, to spend time with you, the giver of that time. 
And help us, Father, to be wise in our decisions and choices. Help us to, to seek your will in our life, Lord. We know that apart from you, we cannot do it, but through you, we can do all things. And this is why we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> What is God's will? God's will, my friends, is that we come to faith in Christ. That is your starting point. Come to faith in Christ. Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago. He shed his blood. He died on a cross. And he was raised on the third day just for you. Just for you. Why? Because he wanted you to receive eternal life. He wanted you to enter into an eternal relationship with God that surpasses our time on earth, that it moves on with us. It all begins with faith on our part. It begins with us turning to Jesus, looking to the cross, receiving what he finished for us. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart, confess it with your mouth, that you'll receive what Jesus has done for you. I know that here today in this room or watching online, I know many of you, maybe you have this relationship with Jesus. And maybe today is just a, it's a, it's a reminder to you to, to keep keeping him first in, in your life. But maybe some of you, you don't know who he is yet. Maybe you've been apart from him. Maybe you've been setting, setting it aside. You say, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. It's not my time yet. Listen, my friends, if you're hearing the message right now, and if you're hearing what God is saying to you, guess what? It's your time right now. It is your time to open up your heart to him. It is your time to receive what Jesus came to do for you on that cross. Jesus said this. He said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, but I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And so let's take a moment together, and let's pray this prayer of faith. If you're watching online, you join in as well. Let's, let's pray together. Just say this with me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I receive eternal life. Jesus, today, I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for the time that you've given me. Now help me to make the most of it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs> amen, church. Well, listen, if you have made that decision today or recently, this is a new day, this is a new beginning for you, please text that number on the screen there. If you're in here in-house, you can also fill out a connection card right on the back of the seats in front of you. Check off that you've made a decision for Christ. I'd love to send you a free gift to help you in your commitment with God. And then wherever you are in your journey with the Lord, wherever you are in your journey of faith, my friend, I encourage you to keep coming to church, keep tuning in, keep pressing into your relationship with God. Talk to God every day of your life, my friends. I'm telling you, God has a plan for your life, and that plan is good, and he wants to lead you from where you are to where you need to be tomorrow. And he will do it one step at a time, and so even if you're going through some difficult seasons right now, my friends, just know that God is with you in the midst of that storm, and he will walk with you every step of the way. God says this, that he'll never leave you, and he'll never forsake you. Wherever you go, God will be there with you. Amen? Amen. Well, church, why don't you guys stand to your feet? Let's walk out of here in prayer. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Don't forget, our 55 Plus is this Tuesday. Man Cave is Wednesday. And our prayer team is here in the front. If there's anything you want to pray about, our prayer team would be glad to pray with you today as we close. But as you leave, my friends, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you till we see each other again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We'll see you guys next time.